G'day and Merry Christmas. This is the Christian Science Fiction and Fantasy Bulletin for December 2020. And once again, we're doing this uncut because it's Christmas Eve. I'm busy, I'm tired. Let's just uh, do it this way. So we've got some books here to look at. So this is The Prophet's Anointing by Matthew Newson, a fallen prophet, the newly anointed, and a battle for the right to serve. Killian Russo seeks to live a life free from the trauma of his childhood. One night he decides to end his life. God stops him. His newfound joy is replaced with desperation as he must learn quickly to stand in his new anointing as prophet for God. In the unseen realm, the fallen prophet has sensed the release of his coveted prize to another. He is determined to hunt down the one who now possesses the anointing he believes will make him whole again. In this thrilling race against time, Killian must determine who is friend or foe while the fallen prophet disguises himself to lure his enemy. Will Killian be able to save the fallen prophet or become another casualty in the war against God? You can't fight fate, or can you? And we've got the City of Snow and Stars, uh, Cities of when something, book one, <laughs> by S.D. Howard. And this is a number one new release. I won't do it, never. Tiana's gift is the ability to duplicate herself perfectly in mind and body, yet every time she uses it, she feels like she loses another piece of her soul. Her abusive and power-hungry father, Katerin, wishes to exploit her gift to create an army that obeys his command and rebuild the air grid empire that fell a thousand years ago. Going on the run, Trinia seeks out the aid of the kingdoms that destroyed her people. When things don't go as planned, she's forced into trusting a failed mage, a man of legend with a vendetta and a talking wolf to help her reach her goal by making a promise she isn't sure she can keep. As she wrestles with the ghosts of her past trauma and new ones that keep piling up, Trinia begins to wonder where the justice is in all and whether she has taken and whether she has what it takes to stop her father and save her people. Never say never, daughter, for never has a way of finding its way to fruition. This is why I don't usually do uncut videos, except at the end of the year when I'm really busy. <laughs> um, so that is the City of Snow and Stars. A Castle Awakened, Castle in the Wild by Sharon Rose, who is uh, kind of well known for space opera, but uh, she's uh, delving into some fantasy here. A foreign usurper, a lady who longs for freedom, vicious beasts who want to rip them all to shreds. Who wins? Never one to shy from a challenge, Lord Tristan Petram took possession of a forsaken castle. His search uncovered no hint of who built it or why they abandoned such a gem. What treachery would strike the founding family from history? Still, it seems a small matter since the generations have passed. If he and his followers can forge a life here to hold out against the ravenous Vixicats, the castle and this land will be theirs. As for the nearest kingdom, they never venture beyond their border or the mysterious forest of tower trees, except Beth Dons, a disguise. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Beth, her last name is not Dons. Beth Dons a disguise to take a forbidden ride in the tower woods. A last, a last fling before she bows to the dictates of her noble birth. Her fun adventure turns into a nightmare of kidnap and rescue of sorts. Now she's trapped in a nameless castle held by a foreign usurper who calls himself Lord Petrum. Who could he be and what will he do with her if he finds out who she really is? Thus, Lord Petrum finds himself the unwilling guardian of an injured lady who won't give her full name. A crime he didn't commit may bring retribution from an unknown kingdom. Do they have a claim to this castle and that he now calls home if he survives the Vixie Cats with an army slaughter him and his followers. Will an army not? A Castle Awakened is the first novel in the Castle of the Wild trilogy. If you like fantasy with mystery, intrigue, romance, come and explore the secondary world with medieval undertones and the turmoil of clashing cultures. Then we've got Dawn of Justice by Ronnie Kendig. Now this is the second book in her space opera series, The Drosser and Saga. A haunting prophecy upends his identity. Now it demands his life. Once a formidable bounty hunter, Marco Dusan is plagued by insecurity as he tours the realm he now rules. The quiet backwater planet is not as untouched as he'd once thought. Evidence of collusion between Drosser and factions and the powerful Sumatians 
and their forbidden technology litters his encounters. Worse, any signs indicate Zisra, the alien who tortured him, is still snatching Kinigo's brethren. But to what end? Lance Corporal Elijah Zakdari works hard to win a coveted place on the Sumatrian hyperjump program, but instinct tells her their intel is flawed. Despite nearly failing the tests, she is assigned to the team and land in the middle of a bewildering conspiracy. Haunted by a prophecy that promises pain and war, Marco forges alliances to protect the primitive world against Sumatria's devastating influence. But one truth becomes painfully clear, the biggest threat to their world may be much more closer to, much, much closer to home. Unwrought. Uh, this is also a book two in a trilogy by Stephen Sandy. Long ago, the rival nations of Edenia and Raza fought a treaty, allowing them to coexist in peaceful isolation. Now in the midst of calamity, heroes from both lands are confronted with an evil none were prepared for, and the hopes of peace are fading fast. Terrors of old known, terrors of old, known as the unbound, now roam the earth, threatening to destroy everything in their path. Gods to the people of Raza, monsters to those of Ed Edenia. Their true nature remains shrouded in mystery. Calum, the first knight of radiance seen in generations, stands at the centre of it all, struggling to understand a strange new power he possesses that inspires fear in friend and foe alike. Faced with a looming war, vicious beasts of legend and devastating revelations, Calum becomes, begins to suspect that a greater enemy is yet to be revealed. And we've got a Christmas uh, steampunk short story, Lights for Christmas by C.O. Bonham. And yeah, okay. It's Annalise's last Christmas at Miss Audrey's home for children. She wants to make it an extra special for the children she calls family. She also needs to find a purpose for her life before the government assigns her to a boring factory job. A chance encounter on the street and a meeting with an adventurous detective may provide both. And if you're in the mood for some short Christmas fiction, uh, The Magic of Christmas by Robin Parrish is currently free. At least it is on the American store. It's showing 438 on the Australian store. Maybe it's not free anymore. Anyway, it's a really cool story. I read it last year. <laughs> on the night before Christmas Eve, Henry Oliver finds himself swept up in a mad adventure at the most amazing place on earth, the North Pole. But the stories of legends have gotten the details all wrong. The North Pole is a technological wonder, an advanced fortress always on alert for a possible invasion from fantastical creatures. Henry soon learns that this year's Christmas hinges on a dangerous task that he alone can fulfill, but his belief in magic and wonder has been lost to tragedy, and he wants nothing to do with the holiday. Fortunately, St. Nicholas himself, who's nothing like the silly round oaf the world imagines him to be, along with a humorless elf and one lovable but not too bright reindeer, have different plans. A pulse-pounding, inspiring, emotional, magical, witty, heartwarming, mythical, funny, fish-out-of-water holiday fable, The Magic of Christmas by author Robin Parrish, is a one-of-a-kind love letter to the most wonderful time of the year. So not actually a new release, but hey, it's Robin Parrish, so you should read it, because Robin's awesome. To Darkness Fled by Jill Williamson. Um, this has been out for a long time, but the audiobook has just been released, uh, narrated by Gillian Bronte-Adams. Uh, and this is the second book in this series. The first book has already been released on audio. So, um, yeah, check that one out. And then Scott Appleton, The Sword of the Dragon series, Swords of the Six. Uh, this is also an audio book, um, which has just come out. Um, it is also available in uh, ebook and paperback. Not sure if those are brand new as well, or if it's been out in them for a while. Uh, a warrior from the distant past is brought back to protect the daughter of the dragon prophet. In a time when wizards are growing in power, a fabled warrior will return uh, to bring about the downfall by protecting an innocent child. The world of Subterran has been torn apart by the War of the Tarantine, a trio of deadly wizards who arrive out of nowhere. Only the prophets can guide the world back into its lasting peace. The dragon's life is in his blood. In a, walled, in a world torn apart by betrayal, Xavion is tasked with protecting what is most precious to the prophets, the human daughter of a dragon. With the life of the dragon flowing in her veins, Dantress holds the future of mankind in her womb. But for a daughter of the dragon to fall in love and give birth to a living child, she must be willing to give up her own life. 
The world's fate hinges on Zevian's steady loyalty to the prophets and Dantress's love for an unborn innocent life. Swords of the Six is the first book in The Sword of the Dragon, an epic fantasy series from author Scott Appleton. And Mysterian 2, stories from the online magazine 2018-2019, is now out. This is, I believe, this, yeah, it's a second anthology. Uh, they have a website where they regularly publish fiction. If aliens made you an offer you couldn't refuse, would you still wager everything on your faith? What price would you pay to save your city? Can the last member of a doomed church find hope once again? Since the original 2016 anthology, Mysterion has carried readers to settings of strange... Now, just give me one second while I pause this. No, um... Uh, one zoom. There we go. Sorry, my wife was at the door. She wanted to ask if I could help with getting groceries out. And she told me that she's brought KFC home for lunch. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a uh, train wreck of a video, but hey, who cares? <laughs> yeah, so um, Mysterious carried readers to strange and wonderful, strange and setting strange and wonderful, with stories about the challenges of belief, about characters who are struggling to understand worlds that they cannot make sense of, and when that fails, to be true to their convictions, to hope and to love. These 24 stories first appeared in the Mysterian online magazine from 2018, 2019, they're collected here in a single volume for the first time. Aliens and robots, trolls and ghosts, saints and prophets, all have a story to tell as they delve more deeply into the mysteries of Christian faith. And we've got stories by a whole bunch of authors here. So, uh, yeah, there's lots of Christmas reading there for you. So I hope despite my um, stumbling all over my words all over the place and not bothering to retake any of us that you've managed to discover some books that you might like to read uh, some always good stuff coming out and this is no exception so that brings us to the end of another year of the bulletin so have a wonderful christmas live long and prosper god bless catch you later